TT Meets TT, Episode 9, Car Chris's Mark 1. Hi all, Andy here and welcome to Episode 9 of TT Meets TT. This week it's fellow YouTuber and friend of the channel, Car Chris and his great Mark 1. If you don't already subscribe to Car Chris then I will leave a link to his channel above. Then he owns two great Audi TTs, both a Mark 1 and a Mark 2. I've already featured Chris's Mark 2 here on the channel, but the Mark 1 has only been on the road for around six weeks. And last Saturday, Chris brought the car along for me to take a look at as we are planning Spring Fest this July. That's a little TT fest that we're planning in my back garden this summer. For more details, check out this video's description. In fact, if you are heading off to Simply Audi on Sunday the 10th of April at Bewley, then keep an eye out for Chris and I and our GoPros, and please do come and say hi. We do love to hear all about your own personal journeys with your TTs. On Saturday, we also took a look at both of my TTs, and we uncovered quite a few things for me to investigate. So let's take a good look at Chris's car and see what work he's undertaken on the project so far. So I'm here today with this young man, Car Chris, and we're here to review his fantastic 2002 225 Audi TT. For those of you who don't know or follow Chris, which there can't be many of you because I hope you're all following his channel. If you're not, I'll leave a link above. Then Chris has made serious modifications to this car and I believe it is pumping out 260 Chris, 250. What's it pumping out? Last time on the dyno it was 250 or just over 250. But that was before I'd done the bigger induction kit, the bigger Badger 5 tip on it as well. That is the second tip you've put on, is that right? Yeah, so it came with a forged one on it originally, but the Badger 5 one is the 80 mil oversized tip, so it's a lot bigger than the forged one. So and put a bigger air filter, so it should breathe better. Um, I think it had quite a poor, I mean, it had a Revo stage two map on it, which it only had the stage two map on because it's got the um, sports cow on it. But I think the map needs redoing again because with these modifications that have gone at the moment, it should be around about the 270, 280. I'll have to get on the rollers again and get started with a new map. Chris has also replaced this charge pipe once before. Now when he did, it kept slipping off and the reason it was slipping off was it was becoming detached here because it wasn't gripping tight enough. And the reason for that is this particular charge pipe that comes on the 225 out of the factory has got a dent on the underside of it which allows it to sit flush with the timing belt cover. Now because the previous pipe that Chris had replaced this with uh, didn't allow for that dent, what was happening was it was rubbing on the timing belt cover and because of that it was pushing this pipe too far over. So Chris has put the original one back on for now but he is going to replace that and when he does it will be baffleless here so there will be no baffles, it will be straight onto the turbo, connect up nicely. Now that charge pipe you had before was a gravity one, wasn't it? It was a gravity one, yeah. yeah. And the gravity one was the one that was slipping off. Now That's apparently, right. you can solve that by roughing up the ends of the pipe. So you rough up these ends and the ends here. So when it attaches, it grips nice and tight. Unfortunately, that wasn't doing that, so it kept coming off, it didn't kept it? Coming and off. I think you featured that in one of your videos where the car broke down. Yeah, it? it broke down like the first time I actually took the car out. So I basically lost all faith in that pipe. So that is 100% not going back on the car, but a lovely forge one will, because the forge actually does come with the dent. Yeah, that's the thing to point out is the forge pipe does actually have the dent on the underside here, so it does not foul on the time belt cover. Under here as well, Chris has replaced most of his PCV, so he's got a catch can here, a Billy Cloud catch can, all done by Chris. He's also replaced this Pro Ram air filter, so it was just a, a Ram air filter yeah, in before. Just a, Ram air filter a much before. bigger filter. It's also got the heat shield that sits around, so it keeps the, the warm air away from the nice cold air being sucked into the car. Again, is that a Billy Cloud heat yep, cover? That's Billy Cloud, yeah. Yep, lovely. And obviously the Badger 5 Badger oversized 5 tip. tip. Yeah, I'll put a new cap on it because I took the old one off and the, the seal underneath the cap was so brittle, it was starting to fall apart. So I just ordered another one of these. This is, I think it's a Phoebe one. Um, they're not that expensive, so it's worth just changing the whole thing. That's done. It's lovely and clean under here, particularly this part. This part's <laughs> really clean, because I actually gave that a clean you because earlier. Clean, yeah. that's you did. So what would you say would be your next major upgrade for the car? Changing the front mount again. So I put the gravity one, which was quite a cheap sort of one. I put it on myself, the gravity <laughs> see one. See if we can see it in there, there it is. So if you had a standard 225, your intercoolers 
are going to be sitting right behind here, one on each side. I think on the on the 180, there's only one, is there not? That's right, yeah. yeah but the 225, there's one each, each side, but obviously with the intercooler right smack in the middle, Chris has fitted this. Yeah, but I'm not happy with it, so I'm going no. to change it. What don't you like about it? I just think it's a really bad core design. Okay. So the fitting of it was okay? The fitting was okay. I had to butcher the bumper quite a lot. I mean, as you can see in the video when I've done that, you'll see how much I had to trim off the bumper. Um, but when, when you buy it, on when it's, when it's advertised, it doesn't show you a picture of the core. But obviously, until you get it, you don't realise how bad it actually is. So, it's got to go. It's always in the back of my head thinking, I don't like it. Yeah. Well, I'm sure there'll be a video coming to your channel about that replacement soon. There will be indeed. And to be fair, it fitted okay. But the core design on it is tube and fin, and it's pretty much just tube. There's not many fins in there, so it's not very good at actually cooling. So I'm probably going to change that to probably either an AirTech one or a Forge or something along those lines. I know a lot of people use welly coolers, but then you've got to start you know, making your own pipe works and stuff like that, which I'd rather just get it on and it's done. So I don't know, probably forge, between Forge and AirTech at the moment is in my head. But you never know, things can change. Paintwork wise, Chris, um, I think it looks pretty good for a red one because I know that they do tend to have a little bit of lacquer peel here and there. Exactly have you that. got any signs of lacquer peel? Yep, Anything on the roof? Bit. Got yep, a little bit there. The Nothing major though. Yeah. We've seen in the last couple of weeks, we've seen plenty of other cars yep. in red that have we got have. no lacquer left at all. No, exactly. In fact, we saw one last weekend that we was did. like that. We did. <laughs> I don't think there was any lacquer left in that old car. I, mean, I think for a red one, it's not doing too bad. No, it's I think it's good. Car. And I think it's, it's holding its own at the moment. I see there's a few little spots here and there. It's had a bit of paint on the um, rails because obviously they, they corrode and the paint bubbles. And that's been done quite badly. You can see the, uh, the overspray actually on these rubber seals here. I can so, see that, yeah. So they need to come off and be redone properly. So the overspray you've got here, yeah. I can see that. Yeah. You can see that there, aren't you? Yeah, so these have obviously, someone's tried to touch these up yeah, in the I get that. and they've painted over the, the black rubber seal as well. So these need to come off. Yeah. Obviously the paint overspray needs to come off though, um, the black rubber seal and these need to get done properly. So do you think that's been done in situ on the car without taking the rails off? Because obviously, so. if you were going to do that, you would take that off the car exactly. to do that, wouldn't you? That's a bit of a This has been done crazy. on the car, 100%. Yeah, you can almost feel there, can't you, in that yeah. seal, that the paint has actually yeah. hardened it, yeah. Exactly, and I think on the other side, it even looks different. So there's a top tip, guys. If you're looking to do your roof rails, and I think there are a few videos about that, and I think if Chris is doing this, he may be doing a video on repainting these roof rails. Top tip would be, don't do them on the car. Make sure you take them off the car and paint them elsewhere. Absolutely. And the spoiler as well, looks like it's been hand painted. Yeah, that's got almost like a matte finish, hasn't exactly. it? Exactly, that's not been done very well. But can you see it's all a bit wavy I around can, here? I can, but there's actually dots in the paintwork, which you've, it almost looks like that's through to the primer. So if you try to flat that out, yeah. you're going to be taking the top of the paint off and that's no good. Exactly. I think the paint, I would say, is... 80% good, maybe even 90% good. You did say though that you were thinking about doing a full respray on it. Did I not hear you say that to me earlier? You did. But once I've got it all mechanically how I want it, I'll get the engine forged, some good power out of it, and just generally go through the whole car, and make sure everything's okay. Then we'll maybe think about just getting the whole car blown over in the same car. I'm not going to change the colour because red TTs is my thing. I basically want it to look like a brand new car but a bit more power. I guess while we're here today, we should point out that the car is currently right smack in the middle of Springfest, or yeah. where Springfest is going to be right. held. We are at Springfest. We are indeed. So Got to two more over there. We have. So today we've been marking out the territory for the car to make sure you'll all fit. Happy to say you will all fit. Let's look at those wheels. Chris, can you tell us what make these wheels are again? I mean, these wheels came on the car originally. Yeah. I'm sure they're. DCM or something like that. DCM, okay. DCM or DRMs or some something like that. They're a wheel that you do see on a lot of TTs, I have to say, or very similar design mm. on a lot of the TTs. I think it's trying to copy like a BBS style wheel or something. It also looks a little bit like the Le Mans style wheels that I had on the 3.2 when I originally got the car. A little bit of road rash here, I noticed. That might have to have a bit of a yeah. TLC in the future. Here and inside that wheel, we've got some lovely brakes. Now, Chris has just done the brakes. Look at the shine on that. Look, look in the camera mod there. Yeah. Look at the shine on that. So they're grilled, grilled? <laughs> so those discs are drilled and grooved, yep. not grilled and drooved. No. <laughs> but they are drilled and grooved. 
literally have been on the car, what, maybe a week? Yeah, about a week. Right. Mintex week. pads Mintex as well. Mintex pads, yeah. Mtech discs, Mintex pads all round. Have you painted those calipers yourself? I have. So I've done the ca the carriers black yep. and the actual caliper red, because everyone knows red calipers adds five brake horsepower. Absolutely right. <laughs> so you've done that video and that's on your channel, isn't it, Chris? So if I leave a link to that video above, again, the backs. It's quite interesting here, after looking at those fronts, the size difference between the discs on the back and the front, there's a really big difference there, isn't there? They're yeah, much they're, um... smaller, those discs on the back. Always great to see brand new discs and pads on a car. It always makes it look exactly. spot on. Two, five, six discs on the back and 312s on the front. Have a little look underneath. Look at the suspension on this. So this suspension was on the car when Chris first got it. And what that, what make do you think it is, Chris? I think it's TA Technics. TA I think Technics. it's just like quite a budget sort of eBay special sort of suspension. Okay. Um, but I will be changing that to coilovers at some point. But one of the big mods Chris has made in the last week is these lovely trailing arms. So they are adjustable. Yeah, they're adjustable tie, tie arms. Tie arms are adjustable. Yeah. And they've got on the car this week. And there is a video, I believe. Will we video out on that? And I've done the um, we've done the rear trailing arm bushes yeah. as well. They're brand new, didn't they? A bit of liquor paint. Yeah. So that's your adjustables. Yeah. Brand new. So you adjust it with that nut in the middle, yeah? That's it. Undo the two locking ones and twist the middle bit. Nice. Gave them a fresh coat of paint yeah. to make them look all new. Both sides done. Both sides done. Under the Haldex. The fantastic Militech exhaust. Straight through exhaust, all the way through the sports cat, is that right? Yep, straight off the turbo into a three inch downpipe into the sports cat and then all the way back. Look at these tails. Look, Look at these lovely tails. I can confirm that they absolutely purr as well. Oh, I've done something else actually. What have we done? What have we done the boot? Yeah. What have you done, Chris? Have, I have we missed something? Yeah. What have we missed? Look, I've got a cover. Oh, look at that. Do you remember when I, when I first got the car, yeah. this was all sagging? It was, yeah, lovely well, job. It's not now, but it's a different colour. Well, but yeah. But it's the only one I could what? get. I don't think it looks too bad. I think it matches my 3.2 cover. <laughs> Have you not seen that that one's missing oh, now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I better check that. In fact, do you know what? The car definitely drove quicker when it came back from the meet last yeah, week. So lighter, maybe it's, yeah, it's definitely lighter. <laughs> nice work, Chris. What I've noticed here is this panel on the side is nice and flush. Yes. Now, on my 3.2, there's a big bulge here because that's where the sat nav sits. You're just being posh now, aren't you? I am being posh, but it's interesting to see a car without it that's a coupe because I was thinking, would there be uh, a panel there for it? But there isn't, there's nothing there. They're not even, there's not even a mark for it. I don't get why on my one, it's got like a takeoff little panel for the actual sat nav hmm. if the whole panel's been changed. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's, it's weird, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's probably a case of there was no sat nav when the car was first released, maybe. So that panel wasn't even thought about where it was stored, and then they've had to change that as they've yeah, gone along. Yeah, sort of like modified the panel to yeah. see. It'd be interesting to see like a a, a 54 or a 55 plate coupe. I suppose you probably haven't really seen the, how the rear wheel. Oh, yeah. Because you've got a battery at... in yours, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Look at that. Wow. That looks quite... very different in the back, doesn't it? Because yeah. for mine, there's a, there's a battery here. There's a little can of fluid you pump into That's the tyre if it goes down because there is no spare wheel at all in the 3.2. No. Very different floor pan. Yeah, I thought I'd show you that. Yeah, make me jealous because you've got a spare wheel. I've got a spare wheel. Yeah. They're quite a quirky little car of TTs. So not one TT seems to be the same. No. There's always things that are slightly different. And there seems to be this real crossover for like 2002, 2003, 2004 where there's bits like facelift bits that are on I some know. cars and not others. It doesn't I make know. any sense. I mean, if you look at your, your V6 over yeah. here, obviously you've got the three bar grill. Yeah. But your O3 has got the five. Yeah. Mine's a 52, it's got the five. Yeah. But we've all got facelift headlamps, we've all got <laughs> facelift gear knobs. We have, yeah. Yeah, see, so, well, I've, I've polished mine all up as well. Yeah, look at that. I need to do that to mine. I, I took it off. Shiny knob. You gotta have a shiny knob. You gotta have a shiny knob. Does that make the video age related if you stop talking about shiny knobs? Hopefully not. Nice and clean. Well, Chris has taught me a really good tip about keeping your mats in place as well today, which I was not aware of. So I'm hoping he's gonna do a little short video on that. In fact, I might, we might do that same on your car. Chris and I are both gonna get in the car now and take this lovely car for a little spin around the block. Lead on, drive up. Let's go, go, go. Wizard house is over there. 
Yeah, Wizard House. Is, yeah, they're called hosts. Yeah. <laughs> the Wizard House. Ooh, the Wizard House. Not the Wizard House, yeah. Yeah, yours has definitely got a completely different sound, doesn't it? Yeah. It sounds like a dump valve, but it's not a dump no, valve, it's just obviously. The, just through the induction through yeah. the air field, doesn't it's it? It's the whole sucking of the. Yeah, yeah there you go. It really does suck, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it goes alright, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Nearly 133,000 miles. That's the thing, you know, these, these engines, they don't get tired, do they? So you can put plenty of miles into them, and they're pretty bulletproof. As long as you maintain them and look after Exactly that. I mean, obviously, do your oil pickup, right? That is one thing I've got to do on both of mine. Um, so I might be calling on your uh, expertise after watching your video to uh, supervise me do that. Yeah. Make sure I'm not doing it. My big concern over doing a pickup pipe is getting those gaskets back on and making sure it seals. Yeah. That's always the bit I worry about. No, exactly. The sealing thing is something you need to make sure it's, it's done right because you don't want to bulge it all up, torque it all down, and then it leaks, and then you've got to take it all off again and do it all again. You need to make sure you get right first time. Just, it's why I said, don't rush it. Yeah. Take your time. Like I mentioned, Chris has done that pickup pipe video, so if you want to check that out and you're thinking about doing your pickup pipe, then click on the link above. It does have a great sound, doesn't it, Scar? It, <laughs> it really puts a smile on your face. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I remember so, right? You know when we were um, done the video on the Mark II? Yeah. And you asked me something. You said to me, do I prefer the Mark I or the Mark II? I did. And do you know something? I'm going to tell you my honest opinion because obviously oh, back then controversial statement yeah, coming here. Okay, so yeah. so basically on my drive down to you yes. this morning, yeah, I was thinking about it, and what I thought about was the Mark One. I think is more of a driver's car, and I think you said that as well. Yeah, back then it's a pure and, car, isn't it? Pure driver's exactly. car. Exactly. I think the Mark Two is very much get in it, drive. It's going to be okay. You're going to get there. It's going to be fine. I think with a Mark One every trip is an adventure yeah because you do not know what's going to happen and especially after the little breakdowns i've had in this since i've had it yeah if i get somewhere i'm really happy and like as i said driving down here i'm really enjoying driving this car yeah mark one definitely a driver's car you can do a lot more to it you can avoid cars taking you out company up the way yeah. to start that guy um you've definitely got more flexibility with it you really feel the road with it you can it just makes you feel like you're part of it. Whereas I think driving that Mark II of yours, yeah. great car, but it's definitely more refined. Yeah, it's more refined. I mean, yeah. if I was going to go on a really long journey and, you know, it was literally just going from A to B, yeah. I'd probably take the Mark II. It's a cruiser, isn't it, really, yeah. compared it to It will this. cruise. I mean, it's quick. It does handle. I've done a lot of modifications. It, yeah. it is a great car. I'm not, not knocking it at all. There's just something about the Mark I. Maybe it's because it's more, more of a mechanical car. Yeah, as you said, you feel more connected. Yeah. It's just, it's it's a, like you feel different in it than you do in the Mark II. It's a driver's car compared to a cruiser's car. Oh, oh yeah, so I'll go up on the glass, no worries. Let me just get my car that's slammed on the floor. <laughs> So, but it's lump in the middle now. I know, I see that. And I'm just thinking, my yeah. exhaust is going to catch. No, your exhaust is all right. I think, it, although it looks lumpy, I don't think it's quite as uneven as we, no. we think. I mean, it's coming to Springfest, apart from to Toby. I told you. Grindy. Oh, hello. Oh. Dinner. Yeah, dinner. <laughs> a bit of roadkill. I need to get off these shabby roads. Yeah, I know. All my roads are shabby though, unfortunately. I'm not sure, but... Um, Big bowl on the road. Was that something that came off the car? No, it was, it was already off the car. That wraps up this episode of TT Meets TT, and I personally want to thank Chris for coming down today and showing us his great Mark One. Fantastic car, and of course, we are in the surroundings of Springfest. So if you too want to join us at Springfest, on the Sunday the 24th of July, then please do drop us an email at the address on screen now. Thanks as always for watching and see you soon. Take care. <laughs> Thanks again for popping over Chris. The car is a great example and it has some really nice mods. It is also sounding great and is pretty rapid. It was a real challenge to condense this video down because Chris and I must have talked TTs for about seven hours. Top work as always mate. If you would like to feature your car on TT Meets TT, then please do drop me an email at the address on screen now. If you like what you've seen today, then please do give this video a thumbs up, 
and also think about subscribing to my channel where you'll find a whole host of content on the Addy TT Mark 1. As always, thanks for watching and see you soon. Take care.